Welcome everyone. Hello. Okay, so we'll start in one minute. And um, so now our guests from uh, Iterable are all here. So I will encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat box and share with us who you are, your cohort, and what you currently do. So in that way, our guests from Iterable could get to know you a little bit before we get started. Yeah, were were we introducing ourselves or was were the attendees? Sorry, right, was that that class? I thought it was that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah, I can go ahead uh, to get it started. I think we have more people joining us now. So welcome everyone to Complete First Friday with Eterbo. I am Li uh the head of outreach at Complete, and we also have some incoming students joining us tonight. Uh, so for who are not familiar with our first Friday event, I'd like to share with you that every month's first Friday or second Friday, we organize a networking event with a key company to learn about their cultural job openings and also let you to interact with this potential employer. And for this April, we're excited to feature a Bay Area based software company, Iterable. And to be honest, we got connected with um, Iterable through our outstanding alum, Ajigil Maina, and she graduated from our program MCBM in 2009. And this year, she joined Iterable as the Chief Marketing Officer. So now let me turn it to Aji to let her talk more about Iterable, what they do, as well as introduce her colleagues in the marketing and recruiting team. Please, Aji. Thank you so much, and it's good to see you all. Um, if I, I obviously no obligation, but I encourage you uh, and welcome you to uh, turn on your camera so we can get to know each other a little bit better. <laughs> and so, uh, but anyway, great to be here. Thank you so much. It's been a little while since I've reconnected with the UW community, given the pandemic and everything. But I have been. Yes, I was at um, at the program. It's actually was the first year that Hansen, um, when he was director, started. So a lot of the programming of the NCDM and what eventually became the Calm Leadership Program, I actually was part of the cohort that created it. Um, things like Flip the Media, which I believe you still have, that was my idea, and I created that blog that the whole platform and that blog. And so a lot of a lot of the things that hopefully you're uh, enjoying from the program are still, still came from that first cohort that started with Hanson. Um, so it was a great experience. And like uh, just, we just mentioned, I'm now at this amazing company and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to share with you a little bit about us and what the opportunities we have. And I'd love to hear also, you know, what are you all looking for and what are you thinking? So Iterable is a customer activation platform. And what that means is that we're in the MarTech space. Uh, we help a brands, marketers, basically do communications at scales, communications that are harmonized, individualized, and uh, dynamic. Uh, and what that means, think about like every time you get with DoorDash, for example, or uh, with Carvana, if any of you have bought a, a car recently, or even with um, some, some big TV shows, when you get a notification um, it, on your phone or through email, like for example, DoorDash is like, oh, your, your dasher is near you, that's powered by Iterable. Or you get a campaign, an email campaign, like, hey, we're recombination, for example, um, if you're a customer of, um, of a company like Bombas and you like socks, um, those email campaigns that you get recommended like new products and new socks, that's powered by Iterable. So it's about sending, it's, a, it's about creating and sending those communications that drive customer engagement or customer activation, like we like to say. Um, I see some people saying, and hello, Angela, hello, I can't see it's like, I'm gonna see. Oh, there we go. Oh, fabulous. Now we have some video. <laughs> 
Hi, thanks for saying. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about what our company does. And please jump in with questions. Let's make this. It's Friday afternoon, so maybe if you, and we just came back from our first uh, in-person event, customer event. So we're we're all a little bit tired, especially me. <laughs> I'm out of practice of being in an event. Uh, and so we have, I have here some of our marketing leaders and of course our star recruiter, and then uh, we'd like to open it up to Q&A. So we'll tell a little bit about that story. So let's talk, let's talk about Iterable first. Is that how we, there we go. Oh, that's me. All right. So before Iterable, um, so I've been around the marketing industry for a long, long time. And before Iterable, the most notable one um, was Tableau. And before that, American Express is the two big companies that I've been with. Tableau, I joined uh, when they were just about 200 million. Uh, they had, it was the quarter after they had gone public, but they had been my client when they were really small. So I wrote the essentially from, from like, um, what was it, about 100 million to to over a billion dollars and even going into the acquisition leading from a marketing perspective, I was the lead um, person from the acquisition with Salesforce. Uh, basically my skills and my career kind of get boiled down to storytelling and data. Those are the two things. So the first 10 years of my career was more in digital marketing, spending a lot of time doing demand gen, doing uh, dig like things like emails and journeys. Uh, working on websites, lots of websites. And so a lot of that world had much more to do with how you use data, how you interpret. My first marketing job was literally new media analyst, which meant um, creating charts, copying and pasting data from two different sources and creating charts every week. <laughs> that was my first. And then when I moved to the West Coast, I moved into comms and PR. And then the, so the second uh, decade of my career has been pretty focused on brand building, communications, community programs, events, so more of like the brand uh, side of the house. So now um, as a CMO, um, I focus on integrating those two, those two worlds and of course working with amazing people like my team here at Iterable. Um, I am from Venezuela and I've been in Seattle for now 12 years. Uh, the first 10 years of uh, being in the United States were mostly in New York. So I've had those two and I have two beautiful um, and very challenging girls. <laughs> so that's, all right. So that's a little bit about me. Um, Patricia, you wanna introduce yourself? Sure thing. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Patricia Bisak. I am the senior recruiter for marketing and for people here at Iterable. Um, I go by PB or Patricia, um, and I have been here since June. Uh, I actually came here on a fixed term contract to cover a summer sabbatical. Once you're here with us for four years, you get a four week back-to-back -back sabbatical. If you wait five years, you get five weeks plus 2000 in travel money, which is super exciting. So I was actually here to cover my, my manager, Derek's five week summer sabbatical. And I, at first I thought, oh, only a summer gig, it's a stopgap, I'm not really sure. And within a couple of days, I fell in love with the company, the culture, all of the things. I raised my hand and I said, look, if you find a full-time headcount, I would love to be considered. I, need, I know I need to produce. Um, and the stars and planets aligned. Five weeks later, I got a full-time offer and I started as an FTE on August 2nd. So um, I am here to answer any job-related questions, questions around culture. Um, and I can share with you that the folks here um, on the marketing team of all the teams that I've worked with so far, hands down my favorite. And I'm not just saying that the way that they all work together is unlike anything I've ever seen before. And I feel honored to be a part of this team. So thank you all for having me here today. Thank you. PB. And PB is actually based in Seattle as well. I am. Ish. I am based Seattle -ish. in Seattle. Ish. Um, self, <laughs> self, uh, so. Renton, Kettydale, down by Jean Colon Park. So she's local for some of us. Yes. Um, Joey, cool. say hello. Yes. Yeah. Dad, so, new dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new dad. I, I have a eight month, uh, eight month old um, at home as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm Joey. I lead the web and digital marketing teams at Iterable. Um, and so on the website, it's basically anything that that's relevant to our marketing website. And so the development of new pages, SEO, 
um, web experimentation. And then on the digital marketing side, um, it's pretty much anything that has to do with uh, paid media buys. And so we do um, performance marketing, so demand generation, um, and we do brand awareness campaigns as well. Um, I'm coming up on three years now at Iterable. Um, my previous company was Dropbox, and I decided to come to Iterable because I missed really working at a smaller startup. Um, that's kind of where I got my start in my career. Um, and startups to me is kind of where all the excitement happens. Um, the team that you work with, the team at Iterable was a, a real big um, influence in me joining. Um, I realized in my career that it's not really the company um, or the technology that you're selling or that you're marketing. Um, really what kind of brings me joy from work is the people that I work with. And so um, every single person at Iterable is a, a phenomenal person. And so, so yeah, so that's my story. And I'm, uh, if any of you are interested in digital marketing on the website, I would love to talk to you later. Joey is fantastic uh, digital marketer, very data driven and very creative. I love working with him. So yes, I, this is like a great, and what got you started in digital marketing, Joey? Yeah, so, uh, um, so back in high school, so just throughout my entire life, I've always been a creative <laughs> person. Um, and uh, like when Photoshop 2 came out, I, I was like one of the first ones to jump on Photoshop and I just like loved just the creative aspect of, of everything, of design, of website building. Um, and then, you know, through school, I was always just very good with numbers and data too. Um, and I didn't really know what I actually wanted to do after high school. And so, um, so I didn't go to college right away. I kind of just took some time to kind of figure out what I actually wanted to do. And then um, just through talking to uh, my sister's friends um, who were in tech at the time, just on what their careers were, were um, a lot of them were in marketing and sales. And I didn't know anything about business at the time. My family, nobody in my family like went to business school. And so um, just through talking with them, I realized that my skill set, my natural interest in life kind of aligned really well with digital marketing. And from there, I decided to go back to school, get a degree, and then uh, move up to the Bay Area to get into the tech. Awesome. Katie, you want to introduce yourself, please? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Katie Pope. I currently um, head up our customer and partner marketing team. But how did I get here? Uh, so I, in college, uh, majored in marketing and finance, but I really wanted to go into hospitality. Um, I just thought it's a really fun industry. You get to meet so many great people. Um, so that's what I initially did. I worked at the Westin in downtown LA, um, service kind of conventions that came through, um, but kind of realized I didn't see like a huge trajectory or like where I wanted to go. So I was like, kind of want to be my client uh, doing events. And so that's kind of where I made the pivot over to technology was going into conferences. Um, but through that, I realized what I like the most about events is the connection that you build with people and that you're able to um, bring together. And so um, now I've been at Iterable um, for about four and a half years. Um, and through that, I've noticed through my career that I've been continually going on this path of community and connection and, and building that with both our customers, our partners, and then bringing that all together at some of the, the larger events that we put on too. So it's a little bit of how I got to where I am. And yes, I will kind of echo what people have said. Iterable has been such a great and instrumental part of my career um, because it's been an, a place that um, has invested in me and the other employees. Um, not every company you can just be like, here, you haven't done this yet. Go figure it out. Um, and that's something that Iterable does, obviously, with a lot of support um, and guidance. Um, but they really, truly invest in you. And with a great team surrounding you, it kind of helps you kind of grow to that next level and, and get that experience and, and learnings that I've been looking for. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Katie. And say hello to your two doggies. Oh, yes, I have two dogs, um, two English bulldogs. If you hear them snoring in the background, they're taking their afternoon nap. <laughs> Amanda, another new parent, new mom. Well, not no, man, now. Yes. You got a year. Well, you got about a year. as long as I've been at Iterable, a year. So, um, <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, he's, we're dealing with hand, foot, and mouth right now. So, the joys of parenthood. Um, but... 
Um, I actually love Iterable because it has given me the opportunity to have, you know, that work-life balance being a new parent and juggling it all. Um, the culture here, I can't, can't say enough great things about just the quality of people and how they really care about you. So um, Iterable has been an amazing experience the last year. Um, I'm the marketing program manager. So I help basically facilitate between all of the marketing teams that we have because it's, you know, several teams within one team. Um, so kind of orchestrating that we're all in unison and integrated working together, um, working on special projects, kind of right hand to Adri, um, managing our budget and our OKRs. Um, and how I got into marketing, I was an integrated marketing communications major at Pepperdine. Um, graduated 09 when it was just, you know, pick the great, <laughs> yeah, terrible time. So couldn't find a job in marketing, but always had a passion for marketing. Didn't get into it until probably eight years into my career. Um, I was in another B2B MarTech company that folded. Um, I went back to a real estate company. And then I was like, you know what? I miss marketing. I miss the people. I miss the cap. Just, it's such a fun, collaborative, creative um, industry. And so I just missed that and wanted to get back into it. So here we are. And Anthony, unfortunately, is not here. So we are going to okay. skip on him. But. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tima. So you can say this is a, a small but mighty sample of our amazing marketing team. And of course, supported by the amazing PB, who's our engine of people, <laughs> bringing in new people. So I'll tell you a little bit about Iterable and what we do. Um, so our mission is to deliver joyful experiences to every organization in the world. Sorry for the typo there. And um, the reason why this is so important, you're like joyful experiences, that sounds kind of corny. Well, the reason there's, there's like actual science behind this, if we go to the next slide, um, it is super, super, super demonstrated. And I think if you can think of yourself as a human, not a marketer, um, people intrinsically a, seek joy. You know, we, we're creatures of pleasure. Like we always look for things that give us joy. And joy is a complex emotion. It's not just like, oh, I'm happy. It's more of that moment of like lift that we feel like pleasure in the moment. And the thing is that when that happens, we uh, develop very deep connections. And, you know, this quote says more powerfully than almost any connection. Now we're in the business of customer engagement. Our whole solution is to get, how do we help brands connect with their customers to engage them, to activate them in, or, and that is all about that connection. So why joy? Well, because it's the most, efficient way in the most deep way that a brand can connect to a to a, to a, a person to a customer and the thing is that in today's psychology you know we're very much in the value base like we buy we buy products and services that align with who we are who's aligned with our values that express something of our own so it is very very much more tied to joy the reality is like most of the decisions we make even big purchases are all are about the emotion Secondly, is about the rationality behind it. And so um, there's also, if you go to the next slide, Amanda, thank you. Um, a lot of literature that basically shows that brands that focus on joyful experiences and develop, delivering joy have better results. So there's some of the stats here, basically Forrester found out that the top 5% of the brands in the world are seen as delivering pleasing experiences. And then both HBR and Capgemini also show that, um, you know, basically emotionally engaged customers or connected customers are twice as valuable or spend twice as much as just simply highly satisfied. So there's a lot of literature, again, like it's not just like a fluffy concept, but there's like direct correlation to how you perform and how much growth are you able to drive as a brand. Next slide, please. Now the big problem, you know, so obviously why wouldn't every brand in the world wanna do joyful experiences? <laughs> the big problem is that there's a very, very big gap between the data, the customer data that we have and the interaction channels. 
On the data side, there are things like, you know, data warehouses, analytics tools like Tableau, there's CDPs like and particle or segment or parity, which is a local in, in, in uh, Seattle. All of these uh, essentially uh, technologies and different platforms are really meant for you to like store data, normalize data or analyze data. But none of them are really connected to the act of creating the, the experience for the customer. And then on the other side, you have a lot of digital or interaction channels. That's where the experience happens. So your website, your email, your um, text messages, like with all the digital acceleration in the world, that's, there's been you know, more and more channels and with deeper ones. And there's a lot of solutions there that help you create a website like Squarespace, for example, or help you create with your SMS. But those are all point solutions. Um, and none of them really like talk to each other and they're really about the ongoing, nor they're really connected to, again, that data stack that you have over there. So this, this gap, you know, having a huge amount of data and a lot of data technology on one side, and then having these like deep, rich, and even more important because like if you're in retail, um, you know, it, tip, it went like digital channels went from being a complement to your, to your brand experience to to the central experience. Like, you know, that's where, you know, how many of you like switch to shopping online? Like all of us basically, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what I do every day. So this gap is really what's causing a lot of the pain for marketers, people like us. So if you go to the next slide, thank you, Amanda. Um, this is what we call the the you know the glass the uh, the broken glass slide. Um, the reality is like if you look at the people that create the experiences, which are going to be marketers like us, you know the ones that are creating the emails and creating those messages or no notifications, like the ones that are in charge of customer engagement. Sometimes they're product owners. Um, this is what they're facing. They're facing a huge amount of data that we can't put into action. You have legacy systems that were built before smartphones. You have Frankenstacks that have developed over time with a bunch of point solutions that don't talk to each other. You have a lot of compliance and legal laws that are changing all the time. And you have a lot of manual tasks that um, you have to do because we have such limited uh, access to technical resources like developers or IT. So, you know, automating is, and connecting all of that requires a ton of engineering investment that we don't really have access to. So this is what's like making our life pretty miserable. And um, if you go to the next slide, this is why, again, you know, here at Iterable, we focus on the idea of like, we can help customers close that gap between the data and, you know, from a technology perspective and ultimately joyify your customer experience. And we, we're make that word is made up. So hopefully you remember it. Um, the way that we do that is that we help brands harmonize, individualize and make um, communications that are dynamic at massive scale. So we're talking about, you know, one of our customers that are in the TV network um, space they have 40 or 50 million users and they have nine different brands. And imagine like they have lots of programming, dot, lots of shows. So how do you manage that? Like when you're in the consumer world, you're talking about 70 million, you know, 10 million. Like you think about like, again, a DoorDash, like you like think about like how many users in the world, well, in the world, because they're global now, um, or a company like Silo. Silo is another one of our customers how many like they have a huge amount of users in a huge amount of data. So to be able to engage them and message them at the, like the right message at the right time to the right person, they need a platform like us. And we're very unique because our approach here to each one of these pillars, sorry, go back, whoops, harmonize. <laughs> So our approach is very unique. Our first pillar that I was saying about harmonized communications, um, this is about bringing and orchestrating all of the channels, like your email, your SMS up, you know, you can't just put them individually. You have to actually bring them together in a journey and so that they build on each other. And then also we're trying to help companies uh, bring servicing and promotional messages together. 
So that's a very unique approach. There's only a few solutions in the market that really do that. No one does it as easy and as scale as we do it. Um, and that's because we have a low code platform, very visual platform where you can do, it. and we have this like feature called studio, for example, and that's where um, marketers can go and set all this stuff in an automatic way at scale, very complex, rich journeys without the need of IT because it's all drag and drop. The second one that's really unique to, to Iterable is, you know, this is about personalization. And there's a lot of tools out there that help you with personalization. There really is none that can help you personalize at the individual level and to react to behavioral data. You know, so like if you do, like, let's say you move or you decide to, um, you decide to visit this website and then do something. Well, now my offer is going to, you know, react to that, that specific behavior for that person. And within seconds, I can send you another, another message. That's, that's kind of like a new level personalization that is not very common out there. And then the third pillar is, um, you know, very, very unique because a lot of other tools, like, for example, one of our closest competitors, Brace, um, is really focused on optimizing the campaign or the message we're focused on like, uh, optimizing the journey. So everything we do is about managing the entire life cycle. So, you know, we really is this idea of like campaigns are basically dead. Like the point in time campaign does not exist anymore. It doesn't really work anymore. So we are helping organizations move to this idea of like always on 24 seven. So what we call adaptive journeys. So meaning that we can react not only to the behavioral data, but also when you have a new product that you want to cycle in or a new promotion, or you simply have a new data source that you need to like put in, or you need to like test and optimize A-B testing, and you need to like cycle in those insights and those changes without having to pause your campaign. So that idea of having a very dynamic experience and dynamic uh, messages that can adapt highly and they're always on, that's that's the new frontier. And so that's what we do. Um, now you can go. So one example I've been mentioning a little bit just to, to kind of bring it to life for you of how, you know, what did all these words mean is DoorDash. They're one of our big customers. And I had this whole experience with them before I, I joined Interval and before I even learned that uh, they were an Interval customer. So DoorDash, you know, um, I imagine all of you when you moved um, or when we moved in-house with all of our, with the pandemic, it, obviously they grew a lot and I became very dependent on them because I'm like a big, big restaurant eater and food eater. So um, I was using all of them, you know, like all of Uber Eats and all this stuff. Now, what DoorDash did that was kind of special with me is that when I moved neighborhoods, so I moved to Lake Forest Park, which to me is in the boonies. Um, I don't know anything around here. <laughs> um, they, uh, it was interesting because they started to send me some messages that were recommending me. It was like, explore your new neighborhood with these restaurants. So they were sending me custom um, recommendations acknowledging the fact that I had moved because I had entered you know my new my new address. So that was kind of like, oh wow, that's really interesting. And then I started to get some other messages like there was one um, that uh, was recommending bring you know bring date night home. And so they were recommending me these like fancier restaurants. So not like your like Chinese food or pizza. It was like a little bit more like fancier restaurants in the area. And I thought that that was really interesting of an idea because, well, I mean, I've been with my husband for many years, like 20 years coming up here. And so honestly, like the pandemic was like killing me. So having this opportunity to have like a, a nicer experience, we did this whole like date night at home with DoorDash. And then, um, you know, they were like sending messages to like, uh, was like pizza night, um, you know, like order pizza for movie night for family movie night. So if you see what they did in there, it's like, it was a constant interaction with me, a way to engage me that was very personalized. It was multiple channels. It was all the time, right? Through the text, through the app. And the, the message itself was broader, was connecting the delivery service to the broader experience. So it wasn't about just that email, like get 10% discount here. It was more about the overall recommendation, the whole life cycle of where I was. And that is what ultimately made me become a big 
fan of DoorDash and like a very loyal customer. And that's the kind of power when I'm talking about harmonizing all this stuff, like this is an example of how this brings, like if you think about the sophistication that DoorDash has to do to be able to get that kind of messaging that feels like someone like handcrafted it to me, but they have millions of customers. You know, that's the thing that's like really, really different. Um, and like that, we have thousands. Next slide, please. Thousands. We're almost uh, close to a thousand customers across the world. You can see this is a map of, of where of each of our customers that are there. They are serving together. They're serving six billion people. Those are six billion user profiles that we host on our website and our on our platform. That's almost the entire population of the world. So, um, so that's to show you like we have massive scale. Um, and here's some examples of some more examples of um, a brands that you're probably familiar with. They're pretty much across all industries. So we have a really, and you know, what's really exciting, like um, as I was listening to my team of like why they came here, uh, certainly the culture was one thing, but honestly, like, it's so cool to be working in a company with brands that I use. And it's like, it's so cool. Like I love, I've been meeting lots of customers. I just came from this meeting, you know, like we were talking like Calm, like who doesn't use Calm now? Like, <laughs> it's like, that's our customer. Zillow, oh my God, I'm like, I live there. <laughs> it's like, I live in Seattle. So of course I live in Zillow. You know, like these are all such great. Uh, I was like, one of the first customers I met was uh, the people from Evernote. And I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that started using Evernote like in beta, like before it launched. So I'm, I'm a huge user I ever known. I'm like, oh my God, I get to like see what's behind, you know, these, these, uh, these brands. So it's really cool to, to be using, again, working with brands that like everyone uses, everybody knows. And then on top of that, you're working with people like you, you know, their marketers as well. We share the same challenges. We share the same, you know, perspective. They're trying to grow their careers just as we do. So there's like a really deep connection with the community and, and of course, like all the culture of, of Iterable. So that's, that's what the company does. I'm going to pause here before we go into how we're structured and a little bit more about our marketing team. Is there any questions about what we do? I'm looking through. Okay. There was a question about um, if you could share a bit about your leadership style, Audrey. Well, I'm uh, horrible. <laughs> so, Katie, why don't you? I'd love to hear. Well, what do you think, Katie? You, you, I, we've worked together. What do you think? Yeah, no, Audrey is a very. She's a very. If you can tell already, very visionary. She's an inspiring leader for all of us to get behind. She's been here for about what four months now, if that. Um, and already like had such a large impact on our team. So not only by providing that vision, but she is not also afraid to roll her sleeves up and get in there and help us all out and make sure that um, what needs to get across the line gets across the line. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about. Thank you, and Amanda. It's a, you wanna... I, it's a good thing that I pay you. <laughs> yeah. Amanda, you get a spot you. bonus. Or Anthony, if you want to chime in too. Um, oh my God. No, no, not Anthony. No, he's <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> Anthony, introduce yourself. I'm so glad yeah, it's, you're to I'm join so, us. Thank you, Adrian. I'm so sorry for being late, everyone. No um, I just, I had a, a little conflict with school pickup, but uh, I'm Anthony Chuli. I'm based out of our Denver, Colorado office. I'm a manager on our product marketing team. Um, I've gotten to know Adri over the past three or four months as well. And I think one thing that I, I truly appreciate about Adri's leadership style is she talks the talk and walks the walk as well. Um, so I think a lot of times uh, in the past, I've worked for leaders that kind of say one thing and do another, but Adri is very authentic and genuine in her approach. And it just it just builds a lot of trust with, with our team. So uh, that's my two cents about her leadership style. Anthony, also, uh, I, I want to hear, I'm sure everybody wants to hear here, let's share a little bit about your um, journey. How did you get into marketing and specifically in product marketing? Because you've been in the industry also for a little while. 
Yeah, I, st- I actually started my, uh, I guess, my career in MarTech uh, at a company called Return Path, which was an email deliverability and analytics company. They're kind of a pioneer in the space. So I started off with email. Um, from there, I went to uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud through the exact target acquisition. Um, and I helped build out their deliverability team on services. And then I kind of shifted gears following that and worked for um, a partner of ours. Um, they were called 250OK. They were acquired by a private equity company and are now Validity and still a great partner of ours. Um, and that's where I f- first kind of like formally cut my teeth by title and product marketing. So it was a really cool experience for me. Um, they were a very small shop. There were about 75 people but a huge disruptor in the space, which was a lot of fun. Uh, And then from that, I found myself here at Iterable. So I've kind of bounced around a little bit in titles and departments, but I just, I really love product marketing because it's it's in the center of everything and it gets to work so cross-functionally with other departments. So it's been a lot of fun. Yes, and Anthony is a great collaborator. He constantly gets called out and awarded by other departments for being our top marketer. So that's just to show you, like you were asking about my leadership style, and that's honestly my number one thing is collaboration. Marketing is not uh, something you do in a vacuum. And I consider myself a company builder first and a marketer second. So I very much, and when I say collaboration, it's not just cross-functional, it's really about the team. So I love people that say no to me or that can't contradict me because they bring something to the table. I try to build a uh, trusting and fun environment where people feel safe to, you know, make mistakes, come up with ideas, try it out. For me, it's all about like, we're in it together, you know? And so um, I do like to joke a lot and um, have fun. And so that's, that's part of it because we work so much. Now I work a lot. That's, that's one of my, um, like challenges is that I work a lot and I'm constantly in this like unsatisfied vision because I am not having a balanced life, but interval has such a great culture about like supporting and really encouraging that balance. I was just honestly, one of the things you know, I think you always have like a personal goal. And I'm like, my personal goal of coming to Iterable is to, to you know, learn how to uh, have a different relationship with work and um, being able to balance my life a little bit more. So that that's like my, but, you know, um, most of all, I, I do, and I love marketing. I love all aspects of marketing, product marketing, events, uh, emails, like I can geek out and, um, roll up my sleeve. I love writing copy. It's like my thing. I love doing press. I love doing analyst relations. I don't love doing that. That's horrible. Um, <laughs> but that's actually really interesting. But anyway, I love it all. Project management. I'm like the project management queen. Um, but the, the like everything to me is super interesting. It's the only department in any organization that has so many diverse skills in one team. You, in marketing, you have artists and you have data scientists and you have project managers and you have engineers. So that beauty of diversity of thinking in backgrounds only can be found in marketing. And of course, you know, with that comes like creative tension because you have such different styles. But I absolutely love the profession of marketing because of that diversity of thinking. Um, so anyway, so this is how our team is structured. Um, currently, we have uh, seven functions. I divided in my head, there's like two sides of the house, but everybody works together. Um, so on one side of the house is what I call brand or corporate marketing. So think about that as the functions that own the voice of the company. What do we say? How do we go to market? Who do we say it to? And that's product marketing, brand marketing, and corporate communications. Um, you can see underneath there, like what that entails. On the other side of the house are the muscle. <laughs> These are the functions that are in charge of directly building pipeline. And um, there's three, it's a three-legged stool. So we have demand generation. Um, he's not here, but that's a gentleman by the name of Henry. Um, and he, uh, that this team is really dedicated to like digital programs or broad programs that generate pipeline. Then there's enterprise marketing, which is really ABM, account-based marketing, and that's mainly targeted to, of course, the enterprise segment of of how we sell, but that's really account-based marketing, so high-touch programs like events and 
and custom pitches and all that stuff. And then um, um, what you call like the post-sale experience and that's Katie's team, so customer and partner marketing. And if you think about that in the SaaS world, which is the business that we're in, um, it is super important. You know, it's not just about that initial sale, it's about retention and expansion and managing a low churn. So that team is in charge of essentially creating loyalty. So everything that happens post-sale. So the three of them, the three of this group, really have, like I said, that pipeline, that direct pipeline goal where the other ones have more of like the brand, like what we say, who do we say it, how do we say it? Um, and then all of this is dependent on stitching it together. And that's the marketing development function, which is led by Amanda. And that's all of our, our employee experience. To me, nothing really matters other than people. Um, you can have crappy tools, you can have crappy processes, you can have, you can get through a lot of bad stuff. You cannot get through having bad people. And so having a dedication to onboarding, finding the right people, onboarding them, helping them grow, um, managing, connecting, you know, building that team um, and really that communication and integration with the rest of the organization. That's what marketing development is all about. So thanks to Amanda for being the heart of our team. <laughs> so anyway, um, any questions about this or we can talk a little bit about what we have in openings. I see there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one of our students, Anusha, asked, like, what are you looking for in a team and how do you decide who should be part of your team? Yeah, um, maybe actually, well, Joey, why don't you talk a little bit about, because I know you have quite a bit of openings, you've been hiring a lot and here for a long time. So how about you take that question? Um, sorry, can you repeat that question for me? Oh yeah, so what do you look for um, in a team and how do you decide who should be part of your team? It's like, like how do you decide the candidates you wanna hire? Yep, okay, okay, got it. Um, yeah, so I'm hiring for two roles on my team right now. One is a localization SEO role. And so the responsibilities of that role is really to help our team translate our US English content into multiple languages. And so we wanna be a global company. Um, currently we're in EMEA, we wanna expand into LATAM and APAC at the end of this year. Um, and so the, the role is really just around ensuring that we have the content um, um, in the languages that we need to, to break through those, those markets. And then the second role I'm hiring for is a digital performance marketing manager. And so that person um, is gonna be responsible for all of our paid programs in terms of driving um, demand. And so it's specifically for performance marketing, um, you think of it as direct response, but the main goal of that role is to generate leads for the sales team. Um, and honestly, for me, when I'm, when I'm interviewing people, um, skills is definitely um, you know, an important piece to kind of what I look for before filling a role, but I wouldn't say that's the only thing I look for. Um, I think a really important thing for me is somebody um, that has a growth mindset that's always looking to learn because um, I, it doesn't really matter where you are in your career, there's always something to learn. And if you don't have that type of mindset, um, especially in marketing, you're just going to fall behind because marketing is constantly changing. Um, and so it's someone that, that, that has that humility to want to learn more, to want to be coached. Um, and to, to just really want to grow in their career. And then when, when I, when I see people with that, um, that trait, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where they are necessarily on their experience, um, or their skills. I just know that I can teach that person, whatever they need to know, whatever it is that they're missing, because nobody's perfect, but I know that I can teach that person to be the person, um, that we would need to be successful. Yes, um, I'll second that big time. So at Interval, we have four values that we look for in every candidate, uh, growth mindset being one of them. The other one is a humility. And I think that's super important. And part of like what makes the Interval culture amazing is that honestly, there's no big egos. Like everybody's very like, let's work together and collaborate. And that comes part of like, you know, that humbleness of like understanding you're not perfect. We all have to grow together. We all make mistakes. We all win together. So that collaboration spirit comes out in that one. 
Um, we have balance, which I think it's really interesting to have as a corporate value. We do look, and it's not just balance like my life balance. It's also like, hey, you know, balance of like how you how you prioritize things, how much do you put in, and like how much do you analyze? Um, how do you bring together people? You know, so that that you know spirit of balance is um, a bigger one. And I am blanking on the fourth one. Help me, team. Trust. 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 Well, uh, that's not a thing. So, <laughs> so oh, no, yeah. And of course, trust. It, obviously, collaboration and nothing happens if you don't trust each other, if you're not honest. So that's those those for us. And when we interview, we really do look for those traits and those values being expressed in, in the person's journey. Like, like and Joey was saying, of course, skills is part of it, but it's not the only thing. To me, there, there is one more thing that I look for. Um, well, I would say comment on two things. One, one thing too is like, it's a team. Like from my perspective, we're, it's not about just the individual. I look at, you know, like if, you, if you're a coach of a, you know, like a football team, I don't know anything about fo American football, but I imagine it's like this. Um, there's like a lot of players in the game and you have to kind of balance the different personalities. You have to look the different skills. So a lot of the time, and actually every time I'm hiring a person, I don't just look at the person like, and many times we've had like amazing candidates, but you know, but maybe it's like a lot of the, like, I already have that kind of thinking or personality or that skill and it's not, so I'm, I'm looking to like, what does that person add to the overall team? Because I'm building a team, not, not just an individual, you know? So that's something to consider too. And then finally, you know, like in the startup world, world the number one thing is this growth mindset that like you were saying, I call it adaptability. Um, it is both great, and it's, but it's not for everyone. In a, in a startup, um, we're a mature startup, you know, we're um, a, a little over 600 people. Um, we're over a hundred million in revenue, which is already very rare, only like 13% of uh, companies that get created in the United States get to be, get to be a hundred million. So we're already in a very rare, uh, you know, strata of, of the, of the world of companies. And the, the, the thing is that change is the constant, like a lot changes. What you what gets you to a certain point and can't be the same. So you have to be willing to disrupt yourself. You have to be willing to, you know, be be builders, be creators, and to be critical um, and not get stuck in comfort. You know, and you have to be willing to do a lot and wear a lot of hats. And for some people, that brings a lot of joy and they feel like really, you know, enthusiastic and like motivated by that. But from other people, that can be very overwhelming and unsettling. So that's one thing I would kind of put. It's like I do look for and really vet for people like, is this something that you intrinsically enjoy, this type of environment where you're going to have high growth, you're going to have a high rate of change? Or are you more, you know, kind of like looking at more of that stable, predictable kind of journey, uh, which, you know, like I said, it's not, not common in the startup world. Thank you, RJ. Um, I see there are a couple of more questions. We can answer probably answer one more question from the chest and leave the rest of them uh, to talk to, uh, to be answered during the breakout room session. Um, so Leah has a question like, what are each of both biggest marketing challenges and priorities for this year? Um, yes, so I would boil it down to three big things. One, one is um, really our brand story. The markets change. We've really scaled. So um, it, we're in the middle of revamping and really growing what our brand narrative is. So bringing that to life, a very differentiated narrative is uh, really important at this stage of the company. It doesn't pay off in pipeline like today but it is the thing that over the long term really sort of makes or break a company. So that's a huge, huge one, you know, and that's not bringing it to life, increasing awareness, all that stuff that all goes into the brand world. Um, second big thing is essentially going up market. So going um, into the enterprise that requires a very different motion processes, um, you know, investment strategy, like all kinds of all kinds of different things. And um, this is a company that's been pretty, pretty well in what you would call mid market. Um, but going after the enterprise is uh, takes a lot of change. Um, and it's not just marketing, by the way, it's like all of it, <laughs> all of the organization. So, um, so that's a big bet that we have from a marketing perspective, we're really, really leaning in into ABM programs. Um, 
but also, for example, things like product marketing, we've reorganized a team so that we can have a deep commitment into how do we position for the enterprise. And that part of that is verticalizing our, our message as well. And our, 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 we're also looking at things like pricing and packaging. And then of course, a much more, um, you know, uh, go to go position of better together with, with partners, with our whole ecosystem, which is uh, what one of the groups that Anthony is leading. So all of that is really to win in the up market. Um, and then the, the third one is global scale. Um, and Joey alluded to this, we are in the process of, um, we have an, a fairly big business in EMEA, but we're expanding to APAC and to Latin America. So to really become a global company, there's a lot of maturation and a lot of big changes that we have to do. Uh, again, not only from a marketing perspective, but from you know people recruiting legally our database. I mean, it's very complex to, to operate at the global level. And I'm very exciting for someone like me, who I consider myself a citizen of the world. It's really, really fun, uh, but it's again not for the faint of heart. So that is both a challenge and a big priority for us to go global. Awesome. Yeah, um, I think that's all the question for the rest of them. We can answer the at the uh, breakout rooms, and you can continue, Adri. Great, and you saw the um, you saw the the positions open. I will say there are a lot more positions coming throughout the rest of the year. We just um, we have a ramp process, but uh, overall the organization and marketing is not the only team that is recruiting. So I I invite you that if you're interested in the company and don't see a role currently that fits with your experience or your profile or your interests, uh, please still talk to us because we recruit for the whole company. PB, I'm sure can share with you what we have open. And then if we don't have something open right now, still please talk to us because we can have many more opportunities that are coming down the road. So now we're going to breakouts, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I would say for our students who have more questions and feel free to engage with our guests in the, in the breakout room. So I set up six breakout rooms for